Dear students, let's do natural numbers and whole numbers. Exercise 4D. This is on page number 37. Question 1. Show that, first one here, division of whole numbers is not closed. That's the first part. Now we have many questions here. Now the first one is we have to show that division of whole numbers is not closed. So here we are talking about the closure property. And in division, the closure property cannot be applied always. So let's look at that. So the first one is division of whole numbers is not closed. Now look at this part of the question. It says for each part given above, give two suitable examples. So let's do it with examples. Now the example one. Now let me take three divided by seven. Okay. Now three and seven are whole numbers. A 3 divided by 7 is not a whole number. It's not a whole number. 3 divided by 7 is not a whole number. Though 3 and 7 are whole numbers, 3 divided by 7 is not a whole number. Now, suppose I take another example. 12 divided by 4, I get 3. 12 and 4 are whole numbers. And my answer is also a whole number. But if I do 4 divided by 12, I will not get a whole number. This is not a whole number. So we say that this is not a whole number. So we say that division of whole numbers is not closed. Now let's take the second question. Any whole number divided by 1 always gives the number itself. Okay. So the second part is any whole number divided by 1 always gives the number itself. Let's take examples. So example 1, let's take 15 and divide it by 1. 15 divided by 1 is 15. So that is what this says. Any whole number, 15 is a whole number. When you divide it by 1, we divide it by 1. It always gives the number itself that is 15. Let's take another example. Another example is let's say take 9. 9 is a whole number. Divided by 1, your answer will be 9. You get back the same number itself. Now, this is the third question. Every non-zero whole number, non-zero whole number divided by itself gives 1. Okay, so let's take an example. So, example 1, non-zero means not 0. Now, let's take 8. Okay, so whole number 8 divided by itself. So let's divide 8 by 8. 8 by 8 is equal to 1. That's what this says. Every non-zero whole number divided by itself gives 1. So when you divide 8 by 8, you get 1. Then let's take one more example. Let's take 13. 13, when you divide it by 13, both are whole numbers. When you divide it by the same number itself, your answer will be 1. Question 4. 0 divided by any non-zero number is 0 only. So let's take an example. Now if I take 0 and divide it by 7. 0 divided by 7 is 0. That's what this says. 0 divided by any non-zero number. That is 0 divided by 7 is 0 only. So the answer as you can see is 0. Another example let's take. Now here let me take 11. I'm sorry. 0 divided by 11. So let's make it 0 divided by 11. When you divide 0 by any non-zero number, your answer is 0. Next one. A whole number divided by 0 is not defined. You cannot divide any number by 0. You have no tables for 0, isn't it? So you say when a whole number is divided by 0, the answer is not defined. So let's take an example. You can take any number. Now if I take 5, 5 is a whole number, isn't it? If I take 5 and I divide it by 0, my answer is not 0. I don't say 0. I say not defined. So any whole number divided by 0 is not defined. Example 2. Now let's take 4 divided by 0. This also is not defined. The answer is not 0. The answer you say is not defined. Question 2. 
if x is a whole number such that x divided by x is equal to x, what is the value of x? So let's write that down. x divided by x is equal to x. So here the question says x is a whole number. And we learned that when you divide a whole number by itself, you get 1. So if x is a whole number, you divide both, you get 1. So in our next step, we can write x by x is equal to 1. And this is equal to x. So what is the value of x? x is equal to 1. This is the answer here. x is equal to 1. Question 3. Fill in the blanks. First one. 987 divided by 1. Any number divided by 1 will give us the same number. So let's write 987. Next one. 0 divided by 987. 0 divided by any non-zero whole number is 0. So the answer is 0. Next one. 336 minus 888 divided by 888. Now let's try that. So here we write 336 as it is minus. Now in brackets we have this. We have to do that first. So now any number divided by itself. Any number divided by itself will give us 1. So this one the answer is 1. So I can remove my brackets and I can write 1. So this one, 336 minus 1 is 335. Question 4. 23 divided by 23 minus 437 divided by 437. Any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So the answer here is 1. 1 minus here also the number divided by itself is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So let's write that in the blank. 0. Question 4. Which of the following statements are true? So let's see. First one. 12 divided by 6 into 2 within brackets is equal to in brackets 12 divided by 6 into 12 divided by 2. So we have a left hand side here and a right hand side here. So let's work out and see whether it's the same because it says it's equal to. If they are equal, then your answer will be true. So here let's see 12 divided by 6 into 2. So we are taking the left hand side first. So left hand side, let's see what we are going to get. Now we need to work out this first because it's in brackets. 6 twos are 12. So this will be 12 divided by 6 twos are 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So on the left hand side, we've got 1. Now let's see on the right hand side what we have. So let's take the right hand side and work it out and see. So in brackets we have 12 divided by 6. 6 twos are 12. So we have 2 into, now here 12 divided by 2. 2 into what is 12? 2 sixes are 12. So what do we get? 2 sixes are 12. So here the left hand side and the right hand side we have the numbers left hand side we have 1 and right hand side we have 12 that means the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side whereas the statement says it is equal so this statement is false so let's write that this is false question 2 a divided by b minus c is equal to a by b minus a by c. So let's work out the left hand side and see. So here we have the left hand side. Let me write it as a divided by b minus c. So a divided by b minus c. So on the left hand side we have this. We have a by b minus c. Now on the right hand side we have a by b, a by b, minus a by c. This is the right hand side. Now we need to work out. This is in the fraction form, isn't it? Fraction form, when you have to subtract, you have to find the LCM. LCM of the denominators. So here b and c, so the LCM will be b, c. The LCM will be b, c. Now I'll take this denominator b, 
Now, if I have to get BC, I have to multiply it by C. If I have to get BC, I have to multiply it by C. So, B into C is BC. So, if I multiply the denominator by C, the numerator also by C. So, A into C is AC minus. Now, if I have to get C from C, if I have to get BC, I have to multiply C into B, isn't it? Then I get BC. So, if I multiply my denominator by B, I need to multiply my numerator also by B. So, what do I get? A into B is AB. So, on my left hand side, what do I have? I have A by B minus C. And on the right hand side, what do I have? Right hand side, I have AC minus AB by BC. Now, this one, this is what I got on my right hand side, which I've written it down here. So, as you can see, left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. So, left hand side is not equal. That means this statement is false. Question 3. Here we have A minus B divided by C on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have AC minus BC. So, let's work out the left hand side first. So, left hand side is this A minus B divided by C. I can write it as A minus B divided by C. So, this is my left hand side. Now, let me work out my right hand side and see. What do I have? A by C minus B by C. Now, C will be your LCM. If C is the LCM, then A, I can write it as it is and minus B, I can write as it is. So, what do we have on the left hand side? On the left hand side, we have A minus B divided by C. On the right hand side also, we have A minus B divided by C. That means these two are equal to each other. That means this statement is true. This statement is true. Question 4. 15 minus 13 divided by 8 on the left hand side. 15 divided by 8 minus 13 divided by 8. So first let's do the left hand side. On the left hand side we have 15 minus 13 divided by 8. So here we have to work out the brackets first. That means we have to do 15 minus 13 first. 15 minus 13 is 2. 2 divided by 8. So I can write this as a fraction. 2 by 8. Now let's see the right hand side. Right hand side, what do we have? 15 divided by 8. Let me write it as a fraction. 15 divided by 8 minus 13 divided by 8. So what is this equal to? The LCM is 8. 15 minus 13. How much is that? 15 minus 13 is 2. 2 by 8. So that means the left hand side we found out is 2 by 8 and the right hand side is also 2 by 8. The right hand side is also 2 by 8. That means the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. This statement is true. Question 5. 8 divided by 15 minus 13 is equal to 8 by 15 minus 8 by 13. So now let's work out the left hand side. 8 divided by 15 minus 13. Let me write it down here. 8 divided by 15 minus 13. This is the left hand side. So this will be 8 divided by 15 minus 13 is 2. 8 divided by 2 that is 2. 4's are read. So on the left hand side we have 4. Now let's see what we have on the right hand side. So right hand side we have 8 by 15 minus 8 by 13. So let's work that out. So right hand side we have 8 by 15 minus 8 by 13. So as you can see they are unlike fractions because the denominators are different. So we must find the LCM of the denominators. So let's find the LCM of 15 and 13. Let's do with 3. 3 fives are 15. I write 13 as it is. Then I write 5. Then 1 and 13 as it is. I can divide 13 only by 13. It's a prime number. So now what do I have? 3 into 5 into 13. 
which is 15 into 13. So let's multiply 15 into 13. So 15 into 13, let's multiply. 3 fives are 15, carry 1. 3 ones are 3 plus 1, 4, 0. 1 fives are 5, 1 ones are 1. Add this up, 5, 9 and 1. We have 195 as the LCM. So let's write down 195 as the LCM and carry on. So this will be 195. Now 15 into 13. That's what we did, isn't it? So 8 into 13. Let's multiply 13 into 8. 8 threes are 24, carry 2. 8 ones are 8, 9, 10. 104. So this is 104 minus 13 into 15. So 8 into 15. So let's multiply 15 into 8. 8 fives are 40, carry 4. 8 ones are 8 plus 4 is 12. So 120 we have here. 120. So let's minus 104 and 120. Signs are different. This is a plus sign. So we put the sign of the bigger number and subtract. So 120 minus 104. So let's borrow from here. So here we have 10 minus 4 is 6 and 1. So what do we have here? Minus 16. So this is what we've got here on the right hand side. So let's see our left hand side and our right hand side what we have. On the left hand side we have 4. You can see that we have got done it here. We've got 4 and on the right hand side we have minus 16. Right hand side we have minus 16. That means the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. So this statement is false. So our main question was which of the following statements are true? Which are the statements that are true? The third one and the fourth one. So the third statement and the fourth statement are the uh, statements that are true. So with this children we come to the end of our exercise. Thank you children.